to CJC Online, and this is our Adventist Health Week. And we're very happy that you could be with us. We are looking at a topic you were designed to thrive, and we're happy that you are here. Of course, we want you to share this with your friends, with your family, with your neighbors. Just click that share button, send it out right now, place it on your status, and allow them to enjoy the blessings and the goodness of God. Of course, we want you to like, we want you to share, Click that button, notification button, so that every time a video is released, you are notified. We want to be a part of our family right here at CSC Online Church to make sure that you get all that you need to grow in the Lord. And we are here for you. So our prayer lines are open. We are here to work with you and help you through as you go through. Just trust in the Lord. You, my friend, you were designed to thrive. I am Dr. Kemar Douglas, the Health Ministries Director. Today, we are focused on to ritual strategies for stress. Let's look at the Bible and how the Bible says spirituality can help in dealing with our stress. Now we know that statistically, one in every eight persons globally suffer from some mental health disorder. It's actually higher in certain parts of the world. And we know that one of the major ones that we have is actually depression. Um, some uh, one in every seven days say sometime where you go may be a depressive um, disorder. So with that being in mind, mental health disorder is from a disturbance in our cognitive, emotional regulation, behavior that are usually associated with distress or impairment in cognitive function. It could be a chemical imbalance or it could be a traumatic event. Any of those things can affect it along with a host of other things. Now, depression is one of those leading ones and it affects a lot of persons, whether children or young adults or old. And therefore, we need to find ways to deal with issues of stress and anxiety and depression that will come our way, the mental disturbances. Now, I often tell persons, just like how you can have a broken bone and it needs to be healed, sometimes we can have a broken spirit and it also needs to be healed. Spirituality is important and therefore we need to focus on strategies. And today, we're going to look at David. David went through some stress, some spiritual stress. Well, we're going to find out how he got the blessings of God. Now, we must create awareness as a church, and that's what we do all the time. We talk about God's blessing and goodness. That's why we have this program. We have to create awareness. Mental health is there, and it doesn't mean you're a bad Christian. It doesn't mean that you don't know God. It doesn't mean you don't love God, but sometimes bad things happen to good people, and we have to know how to deal with the issues as they come. We must create awareness about other things, importance and outlook of health, and mental health, and give support to individuals who need it. The Bible has solutions to cope with distressing situations and the burden of mental health issue. God is the one who has a source of wisdom and comfort and hope. And therefore, the principles of God's wisdom has existed from the beginning and been found by scientists to be, have great impact and benefit to our survival and our growth. That's why we need to reach for benefits. Amen. So David experienced. Now, 1 Samuel 29 and 30 has a wonderful story. Well, not so wonderful. It was stressing to David. In fact, David was actually serving, running away from his own nation because the king wanted to kill him. And he found refuge in another nation. And he was helping to fight with that nation and help that nation through their problems. And it so happened that they were, that nation was in a war with Israel. And they said, hey, we can't use David because if we use David, David may actually turn against us. So they sent David away. And of course, David fighters. So David went turn to uh, Ziklag and when he was there, he actually found out that the country has been raided, um, 1 Samuel 30, and that they had burned the city, the, the women and the young children and the old, and they did all these things. And David really, really felt very sad. He was distressed. On top of that distress, something has happened. David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left, and the men then blamed David. Um, verse 6 of chapter 30 says, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in their soul, each for his sons and daughters. It's a, it's a horrific story that David went through. He was under tremendous stress. What was the state of everyone's emotion and mental health at this time? David was in distress. David was alone because everybody that he was leading deserted him. They were not blaming him. The men's reaction was 
blaming and bitter. They made decisions in anger. They wanted to stone him. They were being violent. David was just under it. He couldn't go back and he couldn't go forward. He was just in distress. So what did David do to deal with his stress? Well, the Bible says, as we go on further, how he found refuge. He went back to the prophet and he found out what to do. David says he strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Uh, first time that's read in verse 6. He went back and he wrote Psalm 56 of the experience about the stress. He says, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Psalm 56 verse 3, he found a refuge in the Lord when he was distressed. In fact, the psalm, we're going to read most of it because it's a wonderful psalm that speaks about what you do when you're facing stress and how to deal with it in a spiritual manner. So psalm 56, the Bible says, verse 1 to 3, Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me all day long and attack oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long for many attack me proudly. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. You have kept count of my tossings and my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Verse 10 to 11 says, In God, whose word I praise, in God, I trust. This was somebody who was in utter distress, saying that God collects his tears in a bottle. Verse 12 says, I must perform my vows to you, O God. I will render thank offerings to you. So despite his stressful, he said, God, I have to still give you thanks. And verse 13 says, For you have delivered my soul from death, that I may walk before God in the light of life. He found something to give God praise for. David went through it, you know. He went through the gamut of the emotions. The enemy coming to him. He crying. God bottled in his tears. The pain. He was wondering, where are you, God? And he turned around and he blessed God. He praised God. So how did David strengthen himself? How did David make steps to get out of his distress and start going back on the path? His, God had a path for him. He had a way for him. He was anointed to be the king of Israel. Well, he reconnected again with God. That's the first thing. When you feel that you are distressed, you have lost your way, the first thing to do is to connect with God. Reach out to God. God has a plan for your life, you know. He can't force you. No, he can't. But when you know him, you know what he has for you, you can follow that path. So you have to have that connection with God. David found that connection with God. He then confessed his sins. He confessed how he was feeling. He confessed where his mind was. And then he turned around and he praised God for his goodness and his power. Acknowledgement of his weakness and God's blessings on him and counted the blessings of God that gave him his past goodness. He leaned on God for comfort and wisdom. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what God has done. One of the blessings when you start counting your blessings, yes, blessings, when you start counting your blessings, is that indeed you remember what God has done for you in the past. And if God was there for you in the past, he will definitely be here for you right now. And he will be there for you whatever you're going through. He's the great God. You can't help but being there. He is our God. He is our friend. He is our king. And he is our father. In fact, biblically, it's best to even call him Abba Father because we have our intimate relationship with him. Connect with him, confess, praise him, and count your blessings. David decided to seek counsel from God. So David learned to, again, lean on God, not to his own understanding. In all his way, acknowledge him so that God can direct his path. David asked Abathar, the priest, to bring the ephod, you know, so he can know what the will of God is. And, of course, First Samuel 3, verse 8, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue after this band? Shall I overtake them? And God told David, pursue, for you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. God said, hey, listen, I'm here for you, you know. You know, the ear for the side, go on, leave behind it, I'll give you the answer. Go, go, because he's by your side. That's the blessing of God. Things can just be like really, really bad, you know. And when you seek after God, he says, hey, listen, I'm going to make all things new. I'm going to make all things right. Just step out in me and I will guide you. What can we learn from David in experience? Well, Seek comfort. 
and strength from God. Confess and admit to your own failures. Yeah, don't hide it, God already knows it already, so it makes no sense to hide your sins. Just tell him what is there. Tell him how you feel. Tell him what's in your heart. He already knows everything already. Confess. Confession really helps us. It doesn't really help God. It helps us to recognize where we are and that we do need help. Acknowledge our limitation and count the blessings from God in the past. Seek him for guidance and wisdom, and God's peace is already to be given to those who seek him. I don't know what you're going through, but God is able to carry you through. Just connect with him. Confess. Praise him. Recognize what he has done. And he will indeed carry you through. What would you do when you are next in distress? Prior to his kingship, David survived as a spiritual and army leader because he made God his counsel. He had many issues that came to his plate combination of his own fault, yes, he did some really bad things, and other evil around him. But he survived and thrived through all the many distress and remained faithful to God. We can also thrive in this distressing climate as Christians. If we seek the Lord, admit our failings and limitations, wait for his leading and wisdom, and move forward in faith, as God will deliver those who come to him. We will make mistakes. We will have faults. We will have sins. But guess what? If we confess our sins, he is indeed faithful to forgive us of our sins. He can cleanse us from all unrighteousness and he can set us back on a path that leads to success, a path that leads to thriving and being our best self because we were designed to thrive. Indeed, God has called us all to have an abundant life because that is what he needs. He has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10 and verse 10. So as we wrap up our episode for today, I want you to recognize that you can use these spiritual strategies to come out of your slump, to rise up and recognize that he is with you. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will help you through your problems because God is there by your side. No matter how distressing it may be, he is there for you. Hmm, that's good news, don't it? You can indeed be blessed by remembering these four little things. Remember to go to him, reconnect, confess your sins, praise him, and count your blessings, and allow the Lord to direct your life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for being the God that you are. Your grace, your mercy, your love is always there. It's unmatched. And Lord, we are grateful. We are happy. Because when we mess up like David, when we do things wrong, when we go our own path, you are still there. You are still our Father that waits with open arms to receive us, to forgive us, to cleanse us and to remake us. We know that we have issues. We know we have problems. But while we were yet sinners and enemies against you, you died for us because you love us with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, you have joined us. Help us to connect with you. Help us to confess. Help us to praise you. Help us to count our blessings. And help us to move out because, God, you have a purpose for our lives. We were designed to thrive. You have a path for us to walk. So help us to walk in the path uh, so that we indeed can be happy. We can make you happy and we can look to the end of the path where we all will rejoice together in the world made new. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being here. Of course, we want you to like, share, and subscribe. Tell your friends about it as we continue to bask in God's goodness because you, my friend, me, we're all designed to thrive because God loves us and he cares for us. Do have a wonderful and exciting day as you put your trust in God.